Welcome to the third chapter of our video tutorial series, where we continue our exploration of the Crossroad Generator tool for Unreal Engine 5. In the previous chapter, we delved into the snapping system integrated into this tool, offering a straightforward approach to aligning and placing roads seamlessly. Additionally, we explored road management techniques, including grouping them together for more convenient manipulation. We highly recommend watching previous chapters to familiarize yourself with this tool. In this chapter, our focus will be on building roads and exploring the features of the road generator integrated within the Crossroad Generator. We will go through each setting to provide you with a comprehensive overview of all the options available. Let's begin by dragging and dropping the Crossroad Generator blueprint into your scene and spawning some roads on the Crossroad using the Spawn All Road button in the Spawning Road menu. Hold the Alt key, click, and drag on the end spline point to extend the road according to your preferences. Another option to create a road is to drag and drop the road generator blueprint into your scene, extending the road using the same approach as before. Once you click and select any road, you can explore various options available in the road generator blueprint. Starting with the basics, the Road Generator menu allows you to build fundamental road features such as road lines, curbs, sidewalks or guardrails. Moreover, you can build powerline system with cables and custom modules or road signs. If your project requires bridges, you can enable the bridge option in the menu, creating a simple bridge structure that can be further customized. We will discuss this module and how to use it in the next chapter. For now, let's focus on the fundamental features of the road generator. You have the flexibility to work with multiple road modules, or if your project demands, you can disable them and work with just a single module. This provides more creative options, allowing you to focus on specific elements like a power line system or a single sidewalk. The adjustments are made automatically based on the module you choose to work with. In the Road Generator menu, you'll find a parameter rollout menu named Road Type. With this menu, you can select the road type you want to work with, offering four options, single road, double road, driveway, or a simple gravel road. All modules adjust accordingly based on the road type you choose, providing adaptability to your specific project requirements. Modules can be categorized into two groups. Spline mesh modules, including road, road lines, curbs, sidewalks, and guardrails, and the second group comprises static mesh modules spawned on the spline points such as power lines and road signs modules. The setting options for the spline mesh modules are similar, so let's take a look at what you can configure in these options. Let's take the road line module for demonstration. The first parameter you can set is named Enable Variations. This parameter allows you to switch between preloaded mesh variations of the module. Additionally, you can choose the type of variation distribution across the spline with the switch below called Variation Distribution. You can opt for single, random, or sequential distribution of the variations along the spline. Moreover, you have the option to replace these mesh variations with your own. All preloaded meshes can be found in the advanced settings of each module. For the module transformations, you have several parameters at your disposal. You can set a local offset of the spline mesh module if needed. Additionally, with the enabled roll parameter, you can tilt the road and simulate road banking by rotating the spline point in the desired directions. This parameter is available in each spline mesh module and is on by default. If, for some reason, you need to scale the spline mesh at a specific spline point, you can achieve this by enabling the scale parameter in the settings. This feature may be useful in certain situations. Enabling the Material Override option allows you to easily change the material on the mesh module. This option overrides all materials applied to the mesh. If you wish to edit multiple materials, we recommend looking up a specific mesh variation in the mesh array and editing the materials in the static mesh properties. The last three parameters, mesh collisions, shadow casting, and culling distance, grant you the ability to optimize performance and streamline draw calls in your project. Let's demonstrate these options with an example road. 
As mentioned earlier, you can set collisions, casting shadows, and culling distance for each module separately, giving you the power to optimize your project for better performance. In this case, we have applied a specific culling distance to all modules. When we start the simulation, we can observe that all elements are culled to the specific distance we set. This feature effectively reduces draw calls in the editor and contributes to an overall performance increase. The last settings covered in this third video chapter are road snapping options. By default, road snapping is enabled when you create a road with the road generator. You can disable this feature in the snapping settings. Additionally, you can enable or disable snapping specifically on starting and ending spline points, and these options are available in the advanced snapping settings menu. When you move a spline end close to any crossroad or the end of another road point, both points are automatically aligned. Each road has a starting and ending point, which you can visualize with the parameter named Show Snapping Points. The parameter Show Snapping Points is particularly useful when you are uncertain about the road orientation or which end spline point you are currently working with. It provides a visual aid to help you identify and understand the snapping points, enhancing the overall clarity of the road editing process. You can also flip the tangent of the snapping point if needed with the parameter invert tangent at start or parameter invert tangent at end. This might be useful if you want to connect multiple roads to the same point facing different directions. To enhance the snapping experience, you can adjust the snapping radius and visualize it by enabling the option show snapping radius. As a final touch, you can lock the tangent and adjust the there amounts to enhance smooth transitions at the starting or ending spline point. Thank you for watching this third chapter video tutorial covering the fundamental features of road building and using the Crossroad Generator tool. To delve deeper into its capabilities, I encourage you to explore all the tutorials available on our YouTube channel. These tutorials provide a step-by-step -step guide on how to use these assets into your projects. If you're seeking to elevate your environment and create stunning scenes, the Crossroad Generator for Unreal Engine is an indispensable tool. You can find it on the Unreal Marketplace, and the link is available in the video description. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to render your tail with us.